Bill Browder, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Great to be here. First of all, I just want to get a, it's Sunday morning when we're talking and news has broke that Ukraine has agreed to meet Russia for quickly arranged peace talks. Your, your reaction to that news on Sunday morning? Um, Vladimir Putin has no interest in peace. Um, if there's any talks, <clears throat> there will be talks where they sit down and, and lay out their position again, which is saying surrender, um, give up your sovereignty and become part of Russia. The, 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 and and the, the entire purpose of this may be to just like, you know, resupply their supply lines or whatever. But, but there's no there, it's just a complete theater for them to, to Russia to suggest that there's any kind of peace talks um, brewing. OK, so you have been making all kinds of predictions and offering ideas for years now. You've been documenting Russia's aggression, Putin's aggression. And so just your top line reaction to how this has gone for Vladimir Putin and Russia so far. Well, this is probably not gone as well as Vladimir Putin would have liked it to go. Uh, he um, I mean, you know, the thing about it is that when you start a war, there's just a million different unexpected um, things that happen. So first of all, he expected um, that it would be a, re- a, re- a, a super easy military victory. They would just drive into Ukraine with their tanks. The Ukrainians would lay down their arms. Vladimir Zelensky would uh, would um, uh, surrender, and and uh, and that would be the end of that. It's turned out to be uh, a hell fight for them. Um, there's just uh, they've lost. The Russians have lost. Um, thousands of, of uh, men in, in the first few days of this thing. They, uh, they, they never expected that all the anti-tank javelin um, missiles that um, were supplied by the Americans and the Brits um, would completely destroy their, their whole approach to this thing. They, 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 they've, you know, they're, they're sort of operating on a 50-year-old military strategy. And the moment that tanks can be pierced by, by, by missiles, that whole thing goes right out the door. And so there are 14,000 tanks are of no value here. Um, I think that Vladimir Putin is also surprised that the Europeans immediately um, uh, banded together and, and declared sanctions on him and on oligarchs, um, uh, on SWIFT and, and all that kind of stuff. He was expecting that the Germans would do what they always have done, which is water down and appease him um, and break up any alliance. I think that Vladimir Putin is is surprised that all of the apologists that he's gathered up, the the uh, former prime ministers and foreign ministers of little European countries who are on the boards of his companies, have all resigned en masse. He's surprised that that um, uh, the world has has basically um, closed ranks, and and it's it hasn't been a good experience for him so far. Uh, is that do you think it's an understatement to say it hasn't been a good experience? I mean, based on all of those things that you just said, financially, economically uh, and militarily, it, it seems to be maybe we could say something harsher about how badly this has gone for him. But I, I guess it, nobody wants to overstate it or make certain don't, predictions. Don't overstate anything. Um, if you if you listen to the military men in the West, the one the, the former generals who are commenting on this situation right now, um, none of them are predicting a. Ukrainian military victory. I mean, it's it's hardening to watch the Ukrainians fight so hard and, and achieve so much in the first few days. But Vladimir Putin has overwhelming firepower and manpower, and he can keep on uh, pushing it towards Ukraine. I mean, we've we've seen how the Russians have behaved in in Chechnya in the first Chechen war and the second Chechen war, where they basically you know carpet bombed Grozny until there was just rubble. We've seen how they've They've indiscriminately killed thousands of Syrians and hospitals and and on the roads. Um, You know, Vladimir Putin has an immense amount of of viciousness to unleash on Ukraine. Um, He he hates being humiliated. There's no chance he's going to back down. He's a man who only knows escalation. And so we have to brace ourselves uh, psychologically for for what's to come. And it's not going to be very pleasant for anybody. No chance that he is going to back down. No chance. Vladimir Putin does not back down. If he if he backed down, he would show immense weakness. The myth of Vladimir Putin, you know, the tyrant would disappear and he would get overthrown. And he and the, the, the main reason he's doing this in the first place is to stay in power, is to, um, to redirect the the sort of right, right, rightful anger towards him, towards a foreign enemy. 
absolutely no chance that he backs down. What do you think the possibility of there being any kind of internal overthrow uh, coup d'etat? Well, at the moment, um, he's absolutely prepared for that. He um, he's looking for that and he's finding and he's very good. I mean, he's he's been doing this for 22 years as a dictator. He knows how to how to smoke out the uh, dissidents, how to smoke out the people who aren't loyal. And um, and he makes examples out of them. People are scared. He's a very scary guy. And, and they even the most brutal of underlings um, are are absolutely terrified of him. And so I don't think there's any chance of that happening in the short term. But but just. You know, at, at the same time, we've created a real problem for him. I mean, the, the Russians are at the banks today, all standing in line from 5 a.m. to take their desperately take their money out of ATMs because they know that they might not have access to their money. The ruble is going to go into an absolute free fall uh, on Monday when it starts trading and the prices of Russian goods will go up. All of a sudden, uh, uh, Russians won't be able to buy imported goods. They'll, they'll, uh, Russians won't be able to travel abroad. A lot of people will find that. And, and, and for what? For the average Russian, they're saying, wait, wait a second. What's this all about? We, we don't want to be at war with our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. I mean, the, the, the Ukrainians are as close to the Russians as anybody. They all have intermarried and intermingled and everyone's been born in each other's countries and immigrated to each other and working in each other's countries. The, the Russian people don't want this, but that doesn't mean that the Russian people have any say in the matter. This is not a democracy. This is not a place where, where if, the, if the people are unhappy, they can replace their leader. But at the same time, if enough Russian people over a period of time become more and more unhappy and, and the body bags start returning to Russia um, and, and the oligarchs um, have all their assets frozen, you know, it, it, kind of, it kind of leaves Putin really by himself. And he's got to be even more paranoid about who's going to come after him and try to kill him. And, and, um, and so it's, it's I mean, there, there's no really good way to, to, un, uh, to predict how this thing plays itself, itself out. I don't think it's going to play itself out well for anybody involved, but, but um, uh, it's certainly not, not a pleasant situation for Vladimir Putin either. Are you worried that he would use a nuclear weapon? Vladimir Putin will do anything if, if he saw that as a way of staying in power. Now, using the nuclear weapon, um, you know, he, he would probably understand would lead to mutually assured destruction. And so um, I don't think that he would want to do that, but um, he certainly is going to threaten to use a nuclear weapon. And maybe there's some, some sort of halfway point where he doesn't use a nuclear weapon, but a dirty bomb goes off or some, some horrible thing like that. There, there was a, uh, uh, a, a tweet by the Ukrainian foreign minister yesterday saying that there's rumors going around that Russia is going to set off a dirty bomb uh, in Rostov a region of Russia, and then blame it on the Ukrainians as a way of, of justifying uh, a much more brutal attack on Ukraine. I, I pray that that's not true. But so that's the kind of thing that, that, that the Russians do. That's what that, I mean, that is effectively what Putin did to come into power right. back in, when he first was, when he was first um, prime minister and wanted to become president, he set up a whole bunch of apartment bombs around in, in Moscow and around Russia, blew up the buildings, blamed it on the Chechens, and then use that as a justification to start the war in Chechnya. I was living in Moscow at the time. I remember how terrified everyone was of their building blowing up. Um, Putin, Putin is ready to kill his own people um, to start a war, and he's done it before. So there's no, no reason to think that he wouldn't do it again. Bill, the last time we talked, you had all kinds of different ideas and prescriptions, economic sanctions, the Nord Stream pipeline, what Germany should do, what NATO should do. How much of what you've suggested has so far been done? Specifically, maybe you could tell me a little bit about uh, this uh, SWIFT banking system, the messaging system that allows financial institutions to to send money to each other. I, I guess you all use that. Um, how much of what you said should happen has happened? And, and what do you make of the reaction to it? Well, so a lot, a lot of things, a lot of good things have happened. So they, um, uh, the Germans have stopped Nord Stream. Uh, the um, all the allies have named Putin and Lavrov as on the sanctions list. There's now um, explicit talk about going after the oligarchs, seizing their yachts and villas and so on, where and and to go after their accounts where they hold money for Putin, and and that's all really good. But there's a, the devil is always in the detail. And a devil is always in the implementation. So, for example, they've talked about cutting Russia off from SWIFT. And a decision was made with the support of a bunch of countries that didn't support it a few days ago, uh, Germany, Italy, et cetera, to do something about SWIFT. 
But when you actually look at the announcement, they say we're going to we're, we're going to cut off 70 percent of the Russian banks from SWIFT. So what's the natural reaction in Russia? If 70 percent of the banks are cut off, then you re- reroute all the transactions through the 30 percent of the banks that aren't cut off. They've got to cut off the whole system. Um, similarly, they say they're going to go after the oligarchs. Well, it all depends on which oligarchs they go after. Mm. Um, you know, if they make a, a list of you know, a bunch of oligarchs no one's ever heard of and they haven't gone after the big ones, then, that, then that's, that's for naught. So it's now, uh, you know, it, let's see where the rubber meets the road. But we're, we're uh, a long, long way better than where we were when this whole thing started out, where the Germans, the best they could do is supply 5,000 helmets to the Ukrainians for military defense. Yeah, now they're getting air to air missiles and all kinds of weapons from all over the place. Uh, what about the UK? What about uh, the announcements made there in terms of oligarchs? And, uh, and, and how much of this do you think, if it had been done earlier, could have possibly prevented this? I think that if this had been done when, this, when, when the intelligence first came in about this invasion, if, if they'd done all, all this or even some of it to show Putin how serious we were, um, there's a real chance that this wouldn't have happened. Mm. I mean, what Putin was banking on was that we were going to do the same thing that we had always done. I mean, he had invaded uh, Georgia in 2008 and nothing happened. He had taken Crimea in 2014 and effectively nothing had happened. He shot down 298 innocent civilians on, on MH17. Nothing happened. He, he said he uh, used Novichok, the banned chemical agent, um, in Salisbury, England, and they had to close the city down for like a week and a half. Nothing happened. And so Putin was banking on the fact that we weren't going to be able to reunite and, and create consequences. And if we had united and created some consequences beforehand, then he might have said, you know what, maybe I'll do some minor version of this or, you know, some political version of this. Um, but instead, he, he, he went with the assumption that that we were going to all do just the same. And here we are. And once Putin starts, he can't stop. He can't he can't retreat. He can't show weakness. He's, he's living in the, the world he lives in is a prison yard where the moment you show weakness, that's when they come after you. Michael McFall, former ambassador to Russia, tweeted thousands of Russian government officials, members of parliament, propagandists and business leaders have now supported the violent violations of human rights. President Biden must put them all on the Magnitsky sanction list now. He actually copied you on this tweet. You shared it. And so that makes me think you endorse it. What are you guys talking about and what difference would that make? Well, I I think there should be consequences for everybody involved in this thing. Nobody should be able nobody who is either financing, supporting, endorsing um, uh, this this bloody war um, should walk away unscathed. And we have a piece of legislation um, which allows us to sanction human rights abusers and those who support human rights abuse. And this is a perfect example of where it can be used. And so I, I fully agree with Mike. And, and as someone who is the president's national security advisor on Russia, he knows what he's talking about. And he was right. He's correct to say that. So before I let you go, I just want to ask you about Ukraine and what you're hearing and 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 seeing there and and feeling my my just general feeling, not knowing much about the country, cultural history, uh, is that this conflict has united the world behind the people of Ukraine. Is that an overstatement? And what do you make of the reaction within the country itself? I I think that that you're absolutely correct that that um, the entire world is on the side of Ukraine. They're the underdog. They're, they're the peaceful um, neighbor that was brutally invaded. And they deserve all of our sympathy, all of our support, and all of our action. And most importantly, we should understand that Putin has no intention of stopping at Ukraine. Right. If he wins this war, he's going to go next for the Baltics. And at that point, we then have a test whether we're ready to go to war directly with Russia to support a NATO ally. And so we should absolutely do everything we can um, to support these brave Ukrainians who are fighting him off. They're doing it for us, not just for themselves. They're doing it for us and they're doing it bravely and they're doing it with everything they have. And they deserve all of our support. They deserve military support. They deserve medical support. They deserve financial support. And most importantly, they deserve to, to have the aggressors cut off anywhere possible in the Western financial system. You think he's going to go to Latvia, Lithuania, former Soviet republics that are now members of NATO. And of course, that means if one country is attacked, they're all attacked. And that's what you mean by being at war. Is that what you're referring to? 
That's exactly what I'm referring to. Putin, when he when he's when he moves, when he's expansive, that's how he operates. And this is no different than than Adolf Hitler um, going after Sudetenland in 1938 as part of the Czech, Czechoslovakia and then taking more after that. Putin can't stop now. He's got to keep on going. And we have to do everything possible to stop him where he is right now. And that means doing everything possible to support the Ukrainians. OK, finally, what do you have to say to Americans specifically? There's a lot of Republicans and right wing media commentators that have been supportive of defensive of Putin or even admi- admiring of him, including former president, former secretary of state, Trump and Pompeo. Uh, we've heard things coming out of CPAC. What does Bill Browder say to Republicans who have supported, apologized for or propped up Vladimir Putin and still do? I would say they should go and hire the best um, uh, PR advisors they can they can find to help them bury any article where they've been quoted as saying that, because that's going to be uh, 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 that's going to be a, a, a precedent of shame that will follow them around for the rest of their careers. Bill Browder, what a pleasure. I really thank you for joining me again. Such uh, important work. Keep it up. Thank you.